Greetings and salivation. I am Umthoff Neverborn, the abyss that slumber, and you are listening to The Elvish God. Now, you may be noticing that I've gone lo-fi, that my mic quality has dropped significantly, and that I'm not doing my usual graphics. The reason is, is because my computer died. How 36 questions got 5,000 answers successfully managed to murder my laptop. After Leafy did his video and there was that explosion of responses, I simply couldn't keep up. And my computer actually choked and died under the weight of all that data. I have been basically without any consistent internet access for possibly about three months now. Until the day of Trump's election, where I managed to acquire a used laptop and using two other previous broken laptops that I had in my basement along with a new hard drive that I had to purchase, I have managed to create Frankenputer, which I am now using. This is my fifth attempt to try to record something. The other four have all choked and died. So at this point, the fact of the matter is, is my computer simply cannot keep up with anything high end. I'm going to try my best to put out something of quality, but... Well, I had to weigh an idea of saying, do I just get the message out? Or do I hold myself to a higher standard, which means I'm never going to get this done? And after chewing on this for about 10 days, I finally decided it's better to just get it out there, even if it's crappy, than it is to, you know, wait for a theoretical outcome that can never happen. You might be saying, hey, Bob, you work two jobs. Why couldn't you afford a new computer? Uh, well, you know, I got a cat with a tumor growing out of his face and a number of health bills, um, both for me and the significant other, as well as I had to have a tooth removed due to a series of infections. So, basically, yes, I am a paranoid individual who has saved up money for a rainy day. It has been pouring nonstop. We are talking deluvian at this point we're talking noah came out and went damn that's about the case here right now so um this is not e-begging uh, i will survive however if you do like my content and you have any desire for it to improve beyond well this i'm gonna be a while before i can afford to actually get a real computer Maybe I'll show you a picture of it, uh, how it's taped together, how I had to remove the battery in order to get the extra space needed to make all the parts fit. And how, technically speaking, it's not really a laptop now anymore because it really can't go away from the plug. Anyway, that's the update here for the channel. Let's move on to some topics that I put off. Well, I mean, basically, since I spent the past three months slumbering, as an abyss of pure void, slumbering is something I do from time to time. I have decided that the topic we are going to discuss at this point is capitalism versus socialism. I want to put things in perspective for people because after hearing some of the die-hard capitalists out there chanting, "Woot! It's finally going to be back to pure capitalism. We never have to worry about socialism again." And blah blah blah. Well. Now, there are a fair number of capitalist purists out there, and they are simply ecstatic over the election of Trump. Something I need to get around to when it comes to chastising my minions. Frankly, this Trump business has forced me to rewrite my timeline and push back the great culling. I'm very disappointed about that, but I digress. The problem with these purists is that they believe that unfettered capitalism will fix everything. And if you poke any flaws into their theories, they immediately start calling you a commie and they don't listen to a word you say. The funny thing is, they happen to like socialism. They won't admit it, but they do. For example, your police department. Taxes that pay for the police. You pay less if you're poor, you pay more if you're rich. In theory. But you don't get more or less service from the police, depending on the amount of taxes you pay. Well, you aren't supposed to at any rate. On paper. The police are a socialist benefit. 
Now, publicly funded projects like roads, bridges, and Hillary Clinton's lifestyle are all a form of socialism that we all benefit from. Diehard capitalisms would state that you can have all these funded by private citizens and subject to the free market, and they will operate more efficiently. This is actually true. The problem is that it would be more cost-effective and run more efficiently, but the problem that capitalism is only really good at dealing with money or things that can be converted to and back from a dollar amount. For example, when you are selling widgets, trying to understand the market and predict supply and demand is extremely difficult. So if you had a centralized government that was taking care of it, uh, they'll probably screw it up. However, if you have multiple competitors that work against each other, then the system in a way is self-correcting. True, the individual actors in the system will suffer. There will be winners and there will be losers. But when you look at the widget market as a whole, it will be healthy and much more nimble and responsive than any central bureaucracy could possibly hope to be. The system does have its flaws. But before I explain those, let me give you an analogy. In physics, there are basically two methods of representing mathematical models of reality. Classic Newtonian physics and quantum mechanics. Newtonian is great for dealing with things on a macro level. The day-to-day -day world, throwing a ball, driving a car, watching the planets spin in the sky. However, Newtonian physics breaks down when you deal with very small things. That's why we have quantum mechanics. It's the other direction. It's very good at small things, but when you scale it up to planets, uh, things start to break down. This is the problem with any system that attempts to model the real world. Any system that man creates breaks down at extremes. In the case of capitalism, it breaks down in very small systems and when the unit of exchange isn't physical. Back to our widget example. If there are only two people in the world that make widgets, then the system breaks down if the two widget makers decide to team up. Capitalism needs multiple widget makers to make sure the system can adapt to anyone who tries to manipulate the system. The other place it breaks down is when you are dealing with human lives. Unfortunately, if the cost of failure or success is paid for in blood, pain, or lives, capitalism is very bad at dealing with that. Capitalism requires that everything have a value of some sort. Everything can be exchanged for something else. Money can be exchanged for goods and services, and if you look at it correctly, human lives. As a society, we don't want humans, hum I never can pronounce that right, humans, to be something that can be bought and sold. This is where most socialists have their main complaints about capitalism and where they gain traction. For example, if I make a car and I discover in a certain rare situation my brakes on that car will fail, and I don't find this out until after I've sold 50 million cars, I have a choice. I could spend a thousand dollars a car to fix the brakes, which will cost me about 50 billion dollars. Or I could just accept that about maybe a thousand people will die from this design error. If each person only sues on average for one million dollars, I will only have to pay one billion dollars in damages. So from the capitalistic point of view, it is far cheaper and efficient for me to let 1,000 people to die than to fix my cars. Now note, this is an oversimplification of the situation, but the concept is sound, and there is an actual real-world example, if you choose to research it. There will be a point, if you apply capitalism without restraint, that people will be converted to a dollar value, and thus it becomes acceptable to abuse, kill, or inflict pain and suffering on humans if you have enough money. And that's where socialism comes in. The government steps in and takes care of these situations where capitalism breaks down. It redistributes wealth, so no one person gathers too much money. It breaks up monopolies, 
preventing a select few from having a stranglehold on a market. And most importantly, it views human life as precious and above the market. In other words, from the point of view of a socialist, a human life is of infinite value. The problem is, is that reality abhors infinities. It's the reason why Newtonian physics breaks down when you reduce it too small or you try to scale up quantum mechanics. You get infinities, and the real universe cannot support infinity. So we have capitalism, the Newtonian model of economics. It works great with nations and large markets. And on a micro level, you have socialism that looks out for the lives of individual human beings. If you scale down capitalism too far, it breaks down and brings harm to people. On the other hand, we have seen that if you scale up socialism into full-blown communism, it causes nations to completely fall apart. Socialistic countries collapse or revert back to some sort of bastardized form of capitalism in the form of a black market. Both are usually undesired outcomes. So while I would agree for the most part, we need a society that is mostly capitalistic. Capitalism is not equipped to handle situations where the cost isn't measured in dollars. If it is measured in pain, suffering, blood, and lives, capitalism isn't good at it. Capitalism isn't good at handling a war, for example. A nation's army is a form of socialism. The society as a whole, regardless of economic status, benefits from the protection of that army. The army doesn't usually have individual soldiers bidding on bullets so that the soldiers who have been fighting the most efficiently and gotten the most war points gets the best weaponry. The problem is, we have to accept a certain level of pain for everybody who operates in the free market. People need to win and people need to lose. It hurts to lose. This is where socialists get involved, saying that these people who have lost to capitalism need to be taken care of. The problem is, that isn't quite true. They haven't lost to capitalism. They have simply lost. And the fact of the matter is, if you don't want a revolution every few generations, yes, you should look out for these losers. A minimal level of socialism is needed in order to prevent too many losers getting together and deciding that an armed insurrection is the solution to winning. The problem is, when this safety net is expanded to the point where there is no motivation to ever get out of it. A safety net needs to provide a bare minimum of subsistence survival, and at the same time offer opportunities for those who are at that economic level to better themselves. Note I said opportunity. If the person is a loser and keeps losing, no matter how many chances you give them, then, well, I am sorry to say, I guess they need to remain at the bottom of society. The goal of the safety net should be to maintain society's function, to prevent too many people from becoming desperate enough to throw society out the window altogether, and to give those winners who had suffered misfortune a chance to show their merit. This means maintaining infrastructure, enforcement of laws, and the protection of citizens from both internal as well as external threats, and those who are a threat to themselves. However, just like physics breaks down when you approach a mathematical infinity, so too does this system break down when you attempt to eliminate all suffering. People will suffer. Suffering is a great motivator. Those who fail should be punished. People who aren't failures, but just unlucky, should be given a chance to prove their worth. Currently, we live in a society that is attempting to eliminate all suffering. This is a form of socialism, and if allowed to go unchecked, will eventually unbalance the system until it is reformed or collapses. I believe with the election of Donald Trump, we are moving away from economic collapse and will be moving towards a more capitalistic society. Yes, suffering for some individuals will increase, but if we strike the right balance of capitalism and socialism, I would say 80-20, to give these abstract concepts an arbitrary mathematical value, I think we can optimize society for peak performance. We simply will never have 
a utopia. It is simply not possible to have pure capitalism or pure socialism and have a well-functioning society. A well-functioning society must have a degree of both. There will always be conflict between the two. There will always be an area where applying one or the other will cause problems. And if it is done too much one way or the other, the people's suffering will increase to the point that revolution becomes a certainty. Too much socialism, the economic system will collapse under its own weight, as the people who believe themselves to be masters cause the system to spin out of control due to their interference of natural processes. No matter how well-intentioned that interference might be, humans are very adaptable, but the fact of the matter is, is they're not gods, like me. They can't anticipate every possible outcome. And so, in the end, the more bureaucracy interferes, the worse it typically gets. But you can find that sweet spot, that point that you can orbit around, where we have just enough capitalism to maintain a healthy economy, which will pay for the socialism that is necessary to keep the suffering of the masses to a minimum. There needs to be a minimum, an acceptable amount of pain and suffering. This is the price that must be paid. There will always be winners, and there will always be losers. However, if you try to break the cycle to produce a world of nothing but winners, I can assure you, the only result will be a world of losers. This has been Umfoth Neverborn, the abyss that slumbers, and you have been listening to The Eldritch God.